Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be looking at my ROG Ally. I've had this for about six months and I unboxed it on this channel. Uh, now that I've had it for a while, I thought I'd talk about it. Um, long story short, I do like it, but there are some caveats. Let's start with the, uh, the good, huh? The good, I've played a lot of great games on here. Uh, notable titles are Untitled Goose Game, Fallout New Vegas, and Yakuza 0. So those are basically the three games that I've played the most on this device, and they've run really well. So this is Untitled Goose Game, and it's running at 7 watts. Lighter weight titles like this can run at lower uh, clock speeds, and, well, that means your battery will last, uh, well, longer than normal. Interestingly, though, you have to manually enable uh, lower clocks. You have to go into your settings here. Not those settings. You have to go into these settings. And then you have to go to operating mode. And you have to enable a manual profile. Um, I recommend setting one for 7 watts uh, because that profile will last, well, the longest out of all of the ones. I don't know why they didn't include it by default. It should have been there. Oh joy, I found an issue with this device that I didn't know about. Um, now when I go to play Fallout New Vegas, it, it, it just crashes. Uh, so that's great. Um, now I'm going to have to diagnose this, which gets into one of the problems a bit early. Uh, this thing runs Windows. Uh, and when they push updates, sometimes things break. I'm going to see if there's an update or something I can do to fix this. Uh, looks like there are some updates in Armory Crate. So let's uh, see if that fixes the problem. Okay, the uh, BIOS update didn't fix anything. So now I'm trying to update my AMD drivers. Let's see if that works. So, yeah, like, the thing with this thing is it runs Windows and stuff breaks. I, I had Windows Update happen and everything was all wonky and I had to manually reinstall things. Like, this thing is a clunky experience and I was going to save this stuff to the end, but uh, my demo got derailed. So uh, now you're hearing about it now. Okay, I'm reinstalling the AMD drivers and uh, it's still going. Okay, it's been installed successfully. All right, let's restart and see if that fixes Fallout. All right, let's see if it's fixed. Nope, it's still broken. Okay, I I'm not gonna fix it in this video. We're, we're not gonna bother. Uh, because obviously it's broken in the default experience. There are workarounds on Reddit. I tried some basic troubleshooting. Um, I'm not going to bother to do that. Um, yeah, that's not what this video is about. It's about the device and, uh, well, a game that did work before doesn't work anymore because of AMD's drivers. Great job. Great, great, great experience. Um... Yeah, no, my review wasn't going to be this negative uh, originally, but now I'm in a bit of a mood because uh, it, it destroyed what I was going to show you. Uh, and yeah, and this worked before. I played a whole bunch of this. I did a whole run of the game on here, and it was great, and I loved it. Um, and it ran really good around, I'd say about 15, 15 watts was pretty good, uh, although you could get it down to 7 watts, and it was fine, but now it doesn't run at all. Great, great job, uh, guys. Good job. Good work. Well, on to the next game, I guess. Hey, all. Uh, as I said, there was a Reddit post that explained most of the problems that I was having. Um, and this was reported a month ago, and it's, it still doesn't seem to be fixed. I tried updating. it; It's not fixed. So there you go. Yeah, Fallout just uh, is broken now. Okay, Yakuza still runs fine. So let's let's go through the modes. So this is what it would look like at 7 watts. It's, it's uh, playable-ish if you really wanted to stretch the battery. Uh, 10 watts, it's, uh, it's a bit better. It is definitely playable and you'll get, you know, the slightly worse battery, but it'll still stutter and lag. You can get it up to 15 watts. Oh, no, don't fight me. Oh. 15 watts, which is performance, uh, is pretty much a sweet spot of, uh, in my opinion, of performance to battery life. Uh, you can push it even further with uh, turbo, 
which it, it's perfect, but you'll, you'll be lucky to get an hour or even two of battery life. Like it, it will, it'll just drain. And um, you can run it at 30 watts if it's plugged in, and that's really amazing, but you need an outlet. Um, this thing is really good if it has an external source of power. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess that, 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 that's pretty much it. I, I like it for gaming. Um, now I'm going to go into more of the nitty gritty. Let's start nitpicking this thing uh, further. Things that I don't like. Uh, this is not like a Steam button and, or an Xbox button. It's not reprogrammable. It only opens up their software. And I think their software is not complete trash, but I don't want to use it. Usually I close it immediately. Uh, you can't remap this button. Uh, and this button is like a select, uh, start and select over here, right? Uh, so what I have to do if I want to get to Steam, I have to use a paddle uh, plus this button. So we'll close that. Like, right? That acts as the Steam button. Paddle plus that. And that was that was something I had to do manually. Because by default, there's no Xbox button on here. And if you want to load up the Steam front end, it just... You can't unless you uh, create a hotkey for that. So that's annoying. The joystick... Um, well, it started grinding against itself, which is a known issue. So I had to get these uh, little uh, rubber doodads uh, on the on the sticks to stop it from uh, eating itself away. When I play games, you, it would just grind, and there'd be powder everywhere. So, good job. There's also the SD card issue. Now I'm lucky; my unit isn't plagued by them. Uh, my SD card reader still works after six months, and my SD card is fine. Uh, but, you know, they haven't fixed the actual underlying problem because the SD card is right next to the, uh, the heat and it can fry them. So, yeah, great. More into nitpicking territory. Um, I, I don't like these buttons and you can't really see them at night. It'd be nice if these glowed. And I don't really care for the RGB here, so I always keep it off. Uh, it's way too bright. And why do I need to see this? I'd much rather see these. Why isn't there RGB under here? Or, you know, just white lights. That that would be good. So that, that's what the, uh, the RGB looks like. I, I, again, I don't really care for it. It looks kind of cool at first, but it gets old really, really fast. And so I just... I don't know why I can't change that. I just keep it off because I never use it. Uh, but sometimes when it's charging and it's off, uh, they'll just turn on and it'll be bright at night. Uh, so that's that's cool. Right, so like another thing, Wind Windows was just never meant to be used like this. It is so clunky and everything is so small. And this is at 720p at 1080 and there's if there's no scaling, it's just not good. Where's all that Windows 8 stuff uh, that was there before, which would be really useful now? Uh, so that's that's totally a nitpick, but it's definitely not easy to navigate. I actually prefer, if I need to do anything, to dock this thing and use a proper desktop. Uh, another little weird thing I had to do was uh, game audio was super crunchy, particularly at a uh, lower uh, clock rate. So I had to go into settings to go and turn off these Dolby Atmos effects for speakers and headphones. Uh, otherwise, the audio would be crunchy. Also, great sign of quality. Uh, absolutely fantastic. And for a size comparison, here it is with a Nintendo Switch. The Switch is much thinner and much, much smaller. It makes a Switch feel like a 3DS. Here's a 3DS for scale. So, yeah, this thing's... Quite the chunky boy. Also, it doesn't come with any kind of stand. Uh, it comes with this cardboard, which I've never used. It doesn't come with a case, so I had to buy my own. It's actually really good when paired with uh, portable displays like these TCL Nextwares. Um, these are actually surprisingly good. I quite like these, and it's great for using it on an airplane. Final thoughts. Uh, this review got derailed because of the Fallout issue. I was actually going to be way more positive. Uh, but yeah, I cannot in good faith recommend this device to people. Do I hate this device? No, I do not hate this device. Do I regret buying it? No, not really. I'm still quite happy with it. But I cannot recommend this to literally anyone uh, because of the issues. 
Uh, furthermore, um, if you've seen Gamer Nexus's video on this device, um, more reason not to buy this or support Asus uh, for the time being. So, yeah. Great device. Don't buy it. I live in Australia. I can't buy a Steam Deck at any store. I got, was able to go into a JB Hi-Fi, pick this up with an Australian warranty, right? Like, I was able to do that. I can't do that with a Steam Deck. Uh, I'd love to, but I just can't. Also, this is the uh, extreme version of the chipset. I don't think the slower model is sold in Australia, but uh, if you do uh, perchance want to buy one of these, do not buy the lower end one. You want to get the extreme version from what I understand. So yeah, good device, lots of flaws, definitely can't recommend. I'd also never used a Steam Deck, so I can't say, oh, Steam Deck's so much better because I simply don't know. Um, yeah, make your own decision, uh, but you, you've seen what I've seen, uh, things break, Windows is clunky, and, uh, it has hardware issues, which can't be fixed with patches, unfortunately. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.